Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and also on Facebook, Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. I am here today to show you a new way to fix up junk mail envelopes and it is like one of the best little things I think I've ever come up with. I love them so much. This is a junk mail envelope that is not collage on there. I will show you in just a minute what that is. Look on the back. Beautiful butterfly. And if um, Betty and Renfro is watching, this pattern looks very familiar to her. And I'll show you what it is in just a minute. But... We've got an insert, a little tag insert here with an image here that shows through the junk mail window. And then you can permanently adhere it into your journal if you want to, or you can just clip it in like I had it clipped in here. So it's on a page and then flip it over. There's the flap and um, I just had it clipped in like this. Um, you can just glue the flap on the back and then you can have a flip out that would be a pocket flip out like that. I think that's very very cute and what I will probably do with it in the long run but I just wanted to clip it in to show y'all and then my little clip here I know I'll have somebody ask about it I have this precious local friend that sews for me and I mean sews for everybody not just me <laughs> she's a great friend but you know um, she sews for everybody in the community and she makes these beautiful bags um, I got her to make me um, a new Bible cover bag so it is it has handles a zipper it has little inside pockets and it's in a nice pretty vintage Paris theme fabric it's beautiful well I had asked her when she was working on that um, to get me some of her scraps of her fabrics if she didn't mind because she uses some of the prettiest fabrics she got me a stuffed bag full of fabric scraps I love it and this is part of that um, this was one of the pieces that came in the bag isn't that gorgeous paper I mean <laughs> fabric <laughs> it would be great pa paper too but I love that so much I thought okay I'm gonna make a little um, tabbed or banner clip and all I did was cut a piece cut me a little flag shape on the bottom and put it inside the paper clip used a little bit of fabric fix or fabric glue of whatever you have just a little dot of it here and then I sewed in some twine just with a big needle I've still got it right here and just sewed that in made kind of like an X but it's a very poor X but anyways had that on the back side so you can use it that way or you can use it this way either way thought that was a cute little addition to a paper clip so let me show you <clears throat> how I made this envelope and I did not have to use any extra paper whatsoever as far as um, collaging or anything like that on the outside to get this I deconstructed the envelope so we're going to gently pull away the envelope and deconstruct it but you don't want to tear it you want to be as gentle as possible and if you have a bone folder this will help you a little bit so get that bone folder and deconstruct your junk mail envelope. And on this uh, window, you want the window for this project. Um, 
if you're working with envelopes without a, a window, that's fine too. Just use what you have. But if you have the window, you want to pull away that little weak piece of cellophane or whatever that they use on there because you want something a little more sturdy on this window than what the um, USPS uses, okay? So I've taken that off. So we're all empty there. And I've just got a piece of acetate. Now we sell sheets of acetate. Uh, they're made by Spellbinders. We sell that in the shop, so feel free to go over and snag you some of that. I'm going to wipe this off to make sure that we don't have any kind of smudging or anything. I do see a little spot right there that I want to get off. So I'll wipe off my acetate. And then I'm going to use fabric glue to put this around that window now. Okay. So I've got it already cut the way I need it. I'm going to go around my window that I just took the flimsy film off of. I'm going to put a good amount of fabric glue around that and then put my acetate down and when you get it put down leave it as is don't uh, be moving it around too much because when you do you might accidentally get it on the window part so just make sure that you're not over the fold lines over here and I'm not and then I'm going to get my messy rag and I'm going to push out making sure not to get any of that glue inside where that empty space is. Okay, and ideally you're just going to let that dry for a couple of minutes. And then you're going to get some scrap 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I got cardstock because it just makes me feel better that it's a little more sturdy. Um, for this one, I used the opposite side <laughs> of that cardstock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of Miss Betty Ann Renfro's digitals, one of her digital pages, and I'm going to make um, a printed junk mail envelope pocket. Okay, so this one is a little bit wider than my paper. So this one was a little smaller than what this envelope is. Okay, you can see. So what I'm going to do, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to do it this way. And it doesn't matter that these flaps are not going to get printed on because they're going to be folded under anyway. So no worries with that. Yep, they're all going to be folded under. And what I'm going to do to keep it adhered to my copy paper or my um, cardstock that I'm going to put in my printer, I'm going to get this washi tape. And first off, I'm going to fold my flaps over on the one side. So they don't get caught up in the printer. Okay. So if you've got an envelope that's not as um, big as this one, you don't have to worry about that at all. You'll be able to um, just lay yours flat like I did this other one. Um, let me get this lined up a little bit better. Calls. I want most of my envelope to have some kind of print on it. But what doesn't get print on it, don't worry, because we can ink it and it will not be a problem. Okay, 
washi tape there. We'll just use a little bit of distress inking on the edges of what doesn't get printed on. So there's that. And then for this side, what we're going to do so that the print will go to all edges is we're just going to fold the washi tape. Now, if you don't have washi tape, you can use masking tape. You know, that tan color tape that you can use um, mostly. You can find that in your husband's toolboxes. <laughs> so, um, if you don't have washi tape, just use some masking tape or any kind of tape that is not permanent that you can easily um, get off of something. It's not going to be too sticky. You don't want um, any kind of adhesive for this that's going to be too tacky. So you're just going to fold it over on itself and make yourself a little double-sided tape on all the corners and anything you think might um, pop up and cause the printer some issues. So just make sure to get all of that taken care of. And I think I will add just a little piece here in this middle and a little bit more on this edge in this middle. All right, and if you don't have a laser printer, don't worry about it. I don't. I have an inkjet printer. So you're just going to wipe anything off that might be on the outside here. And then don't worry about this um, acetate here because I'll show you what I did here. Because, of course, that um, inkjet printer is going to print on top of that, but it's going to smudge and smear. It's not going to stay on there. Now, I have been using uh, Betty's Vintage Blues kit, um, digital kit, and this is another sheet that I want to use. So this is uh, page six, I do believe. So we're going to go to print, and I'm just going to take off the ones that I don't want to print. And then I've got to figure out which way I want to put my paper in my copier. So um, you might want to do a test run, um, run a sheet through with yes and no on it, and make sure of which way you need to put your page through. But I just think this is the cutest idea. and you're just using digitals in a brand new way. Now this is a 21 page, 20 or 21 page kit that Miss Betty has, 20 page kit that she has in her Etsy shop. So if you love the color blue and you love vintage stuff, you are going to want this kit. So you'll need to go over to her Etsy shop and get that by all means. Now, uh, my only other issue is this envelope is wider and I'm hoping that it's not going to give my printer any resistance on the edges. We shall see when I put it through. So, um, that was not the page. I need to go to page 7. Yep, it was page 7, not page 6 of that kit. Now, I'm going to take this to my printer. I'm going to load it into the paper dock. And I'll be right back. So it did pretty good. There is how that one looks when it come out of the printer. And I have taken pictures of this one when it came out of the printer. So this is what this one looked like whenever it came out of the printer. And then this is what this one looked like when I took it off of the uh, cardstock backing. Isn't that neat? I mean, how have I not ever thought of that before? 
So I'm going to flip this one over and this is probably the one step you won't have to do if you have a small enough envelope. You didn't have to wrap it around on the back side. So I'm just going to take off my washi tape off the back and try not to destroy my envelope. And then I'm going to carefully pick off my envelope that has the folded over washi back behind it. I think this is just like the neatest thing. So pretty. And then you're left with this that you could totally trim off and use that strip on something. Same thing on this side if you wanted to. Now, um, I'm going to take off my double-sided tape from this side. And like I said, try not to destroy my envelope. Even though washi is not a permanent glue, you can mess it up. So be gentle. Okay. Then I'm going to fold over my flaps where they should be folded and I'm going to fold up my envelope and see what needs to be done. I'm going to trim off where the printer failed me. Okay. And then this part that's got ink on it that's not going to stay because it is not permanent ink and it's not going to adhere to your um, acetate. What I did on this one, you can tell it's got like a ink distressed edge around it. And all I did was use my messy rag and then went toward the edges with it. And when you do that, that ink that the printer just used goes toward the edges of your acetate window. So there you've got a distressed window without even hardly trying. So what I'm going to do is get my scissors and I'm going to trim off the white edge that I've got here. But I'm going to leave my flaps so you can tell here that my printer had a little bit of trouble just because my flaps were a little too wide. A little too wide of an envelope. But I'm going to make myself my own little flaps here. And trim off where my printer went off the edge. Now when I put this on my page of my journal, when I get my flaps turned in, my butterfly is going to be in the spot where my window is. So I'm going to have a nice little butterfly right there showing on my page. I love how that digital printed Betty Ann Renfro. This is a new way to use those digitals you gave us and I'm loving this so now I'm going to turn in my flaps and this was a little bit of a brittle envelope because I've got some tearing going on up here so I'm just going to turn these flaps in as best I can without causing too much damage to the um, envelope itself and I'm going to put on some fabric glue on those flaps and don't go all the way to the edge of the envelope because it's not going to cover all the way to the edge. Then I'm going to ink this top piece and down the sides before I lay it down. Oh, 
on those glued flaps there. And you want to make sure that you don't get any glue inside your envelope because then it's going to close up and it won't be a pocket for you. Okay, and I will use my messy rag to kind of run down in there and make sure nothing is sticking where it shouldn't be. And then you could always run your um, bone folder down in it too. So this side, the flap is not in as much as it needs to be. So you've got a little bit of time to work with that fabric glue before it adheres. Okay, so now you've got this nice little covered envelope and I know it did take a little bit of time but it's not near as much time as it takes when you are uh, collaging getting scraps in my opinion anyway because I tend to overthink where I want to put my collaged pieces I love how that looks and then I'm going to turn down my top flap and I'm going to ink that also. I didn't ink that one. I locked it just as is. So I didn't ink that one. Um, I will ink this back flap and ink the back side of this also. So now we have the envelope together. And with this one, I covered up the inside flap. If you want to do that, you can. You don't have to because... Um, a lot of the time when you put in an envelope pocket in your journal, you're going to glue down that flap anyways, but I did cover that just because I could use it as a freestanding pocket if I want to. Now you need to make something for the inside and um, if you want something to show through that window, you need to put it in and line it up and I'll show you how I did that. Now, I need to cut... A piece of cardstock, just scrap cardstock is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut it at, it looks like eight and a quarter tall. And then about three and three quarters wide. So let's find a piece that can go in there, a long cut off of some kind that I have. Here is a beauty. I love that polka dot. Um, so let's cut this three and three quarters wide, maybe just a hair longer, and then eight and a quarter tall. Okay, and then. Um, if you want to round the corners, or with that one, I put the tag um, top on it. But I'll just round all the corners of this one. And then ink the edges front and back. before you ink everything and get it all pretty you want to make sure <laughs> that it's going to fit in your pocket in your envelope now i've got a flap over here that has decided to try and glue itself down so 
go back in there and oh yeah that fits and yeah it fits good I love it as is look at that how cute okay but I want to have some kind of little um, image in the middle like I have here and we can get that from any kind of um, die cut pack that you've got if you've got some older die cuts or if you wanted to do some um, Christmas envelopes like this and you could do your Christmas letters inside of these that would be very cute I like that but it looks a little wide doesn't it maybe if we had a ticket of some kind that's very cute and sticking with the butterfly theme I know that there's a butterfly or something in here oh I like that little portrait too there's a yellow butterfly let's see if there's another one that might match our outside butterfly a little bit better with maybe some blue in it yeah look at there look at that one how pretty all right let's figure out how we can get all of these kind of in the center there and using them as our centerpiece in this little window I like that so this is the snippets die cut pack from Tim Holtz And what I'm going to do is put some washi tape, double sided, on the back side of my little collage that I'm wanting to put on this card. Um, I'm going to get my collage together first though, so I'm going to ink my edges. And with this one, it was just one card that I put on there. And ink all these edges. But this is three pieces I'm wanting to put together as a little collage on the corner of this piece. And I think I want to put a little piece of book page back behind all of it too. So let's do that. Get um, a little piece of extra book page that I've just got lying in my scrap pile and maybe like this and then go ahead and glue on all the pieces and then I'll show you how I Got it all to work together and be nice <laughs> and show through that window without any issues. So I'm just going to layer up my little collage how I want it. But then before I put my um, glue on the back side of the full collage, I'm just going to put some washi that I turn backwards or inside out onto itself on the back side here like this go ahead and put my card in how it's going to be and then I'm going to put this collaged piece inside the envelope and just keep that card in place and then figure out where I want to put that and if it's center or if it needs to come down some like I love how it's centered right there and I do think it needs to come down just a touch like that and then move over this way some 
and then straighten up some. So I love that, just as is. Um, but those butterflies are almost twinning right there. And I do love the polka dot paper back behind it. So I think I'll move them down just a little bit. And you've got all the movement in the world back behind because you've got that washi tape. I love that. Love the way that looks. Just like that. So I'm going to add it on there so you can pull out your card. Your piece is washi taped on there. So you can make yourself little um, pencil mark. So I'm going to straighten it up just a touch. Make myself a pencil mark there. And a pencil mark there where the top's going to be and then the bottom of that dance piece is going to be. Take my washi tape off. I'm going to put some glue down there and then use my little marks I just made for where my piece needs to go and then use my messy rag to get off any excess glue that I had put down there and then moment of truth Put it back in the envelope and see how it looks it's a little bit on the crooked side so i'll need to move that over just a little bit that way so it's on the crooked side as far as looking out from that window um, the way i had put it on here was fine but it was a little bit crooked inside the envelope and that is better I like that you can see a little bit of the book page there and then a little bit of that too and then the butterflies are not exactly on the same level so that gives you a little bit of um, difference there too there are those two here is a smaller version I've already put my acetate window on there this one's just a smaller envelope I wanted to show y'all how I did this one and it will be just a little sped up because y'all have already seen me do this and you don't see me go to the printer anyway so I'm going to speed this one up and I'll show you what it looks like but look that one fits on the sheet of cardstock a lot better all the flaps are on there so I'm going to get print all over this one and this is the page from the vintage blue kit that I'm going to print on this one so I won't get everything on here especially probably the bird or the butterfly it'll come off on the sides but I can use that cardstock and fussy cut that stuff out but I'll probably get you know most of that middle body part of the page and here is what it looks like when it comes out of the printer I love this. This is like the element of surprise, y'all. You know, um, when you start pulling that envelope up and you see what actually printed on the envelope. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of bird wing here. I'm going to get a little bit of butterfly wing here. Uh, look at that nice piece of the um, postage kind of stamp that I'll get there on the edge of that. There's my window that I'll have to wipe off. One day, I will get a printer that will have that permanent ink look and will print on um, things like acetate and stuff. I'll have to do some research as far as what kind of printer I will need to achieve that, but I know they're out there. Do I have to get archival um, <laughs> ink? refills for my printer it's probably something like that ain't it all right i'm taking up my washi tape and just being gentle not to rip my envelope oh this one's going to be so pretty which all of betty's designs are pretty anyway this vintage blue is in my top 
five of the digital kits she has. So look at that, how cute. I will have a good strip on this side and a good strip on this side. Can even punch it out if I want to. I love that. Okay, let's take off our washi. And I am not going to ink this one. I like how it looks as is. I'm just folding that up and gluing it onto my flaps on the edge. This one came together a lot easier than that. <laughs> the other one was too big for my 8.5 by 11 paper. And are y'all ready for the reveal? Look at it. How pretty. That is just gorgeous. Now we need to wipe off our acetate window and get that ink nice and added to the edges there. I love that little process too. It is the little things that I love in projects like this. So that ink is nicely dispersed around the edges of that window. And look at that, how it just comes straight up to the window, how that pattern just worked out. Beautiful. And then there is the back of that one. So now I need to figure out, yep, that's the way I want it. I could do it either way though. Ooh, I like that way too. Let's do that because on these, we've done both of these with the window at the bottom. So this one, if we did window at the top, we could put it on a left facing page like that. Look how pretty that is. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. So now we need to add in, put an insert in. So I'm going to go seven and an eighth of an inch. And then it looks like just a touch under three and three fourths. So seven and eight by right under three and three fourths. Okay, and then here is this one with its little insert finished. It had a little um, punched out hole on this one side, so that's why I covered it with some book page. And there's the little Tim Holtz wallpaper flower put in there. And I thought this one needed a little extra something. So <laughs> I'm going to put this Tim Holtz word phrase on there. And it says, trust your crazy ideas. <laughs> and that is indeed what this is. But I love this crazy idea, and I hope y'all have too. Oh, that is how I did this new um, junk mail envelope pocket for my journal. And I love how these turn out. And this gives whole new meaning to digital art. Because um, you can print any kind of digital onto an envelope now by just... Um, double-sided tape on the back and putting it on a piece of cardstock and running it through your printer. I just love how that turned out. Uh, if y'all try this, please make sure to tag me, Melina Pilot, or me, Crafty Scrapper, so that I can find it and leave you some love. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to leave me some love in the comments below if you have any questions. Also, leave me that question in the comments below. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and do so. And click that little bell so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Love ya. Bye, y'all.